Hey, it's Armored Core. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Review Den, where I'm here to answer that burning, searing question I'm sure all of one other person out there has. What if they made another Armored Core game? Well, for those of you playing along at home, before they became known as the Elder Souls-born, unforgiving third-person action stars they are today, From Software was known for another series that garnered its own cult following. And yes, I'm of course referring to Otogi, Myth of Demons. Armored Core, I'm referring to Armored Core. Now, piloting and battling in your own giant mechas is always awesome in my book, but the Armored Core series belongs to the unique subgenre of what I would call, for lack of better terms, mech builders. You aren't dumped into a campaign with pre-selected or story-based mechas. Instead, you'll start with a basic build, then find new equipment during missions, and it's up to you to add to and develop your mech if you hope to stand a chance of getting anywhere. Usually, there's some sort of restrictions, whether they be weight, cost, or development, so you can't just slam together all the very best parts at once. You'll have to slowly build up and swap in better equipment. And it's a engineering management that makes these games so addicting. The Armored Core series perfected this formula of mech building and combat, and the series developed a reasonable but devoted fan base, enough so to keep the series alive for over 20 titles. But as of now, mid-2022, the IP has sadly gone dormant. There are rumblings of another game from time to time, but as it stands, From Software seems focused on their Souls-style games. And you can't blame them, they definitely sell better. Enter Marvelous Entertainment and Shade Inc. Japan. They initially released Assault Gunners for the Vita in 2012, but in Japan only. The rest of us got it slightly updated and for current systems in 2018 as Assault Gunners HD. And despite some lacking production values, I think it puts in a decent effort as an AC clone. Unlike Armored Core, which usually casts you as a mercenary in some dystopian corporate power struggle, Assault Gunners casts you as, well, okay, still a mercenary, but working for the well-being of the World Federation, who are terraforming and colonizing Mars. Your assault team is sent to the Red Planet to protect an ice asteroid being delivered to create an ocean. Hey, wasn't there a Mech Warrior 2 mercenaries mission like this? When all the worker robots, or ants, begin turning hostile and attacking the colonists. You'll have to defend yourself against the rogue ants, upgrade your mecha, and hunt down the forces leading the robot uprising. Gameplay is similar to later Armored Core games in that it plays like a traditional third-person action game. Movement and aim are on the sticks, but your aim speed is hard-coded to the mech's performance, so anyone expecting to do 360 no-scopes will have to adjust. You have rechargeable shield energy, which absorbs damage, but this doubles as boost, or dash, energy, so you can get around the battlefield at high speed. For offense, there are two slots for primary weapons, as well as a specialty shoulder weapon and a melee or fist weapon. Your main weapons consist of rifles, shotguns, and energy weapons, with grenades or guided missiles available for the shoulder slot. Most of these are offered in variations, such as slower, more powerful weapons versus rapid-fire ones, and all of them have more powerful versions scattered throughout the levels as you progress through the game. Weapon types are classified as impact, explosive, or energy, although translation issues kind of confuse things. If you're confused, it's impact, explosive, and energy. Come on, guys. You'll find new torso and leg configurations, and these can be upgraded with development points to improve them. The difference between level 1 and level 10 is pretty massive, so be sure to keep upgrading. There are modifier slots which can boost specific damage types or defend against them. And finally, you level up through experience points which slowly upgrade all of your stats. So, one way or another, there's always a way to become more powerful should you become stuck. There are 35 levels to the main game, and this does include branching paths, so there are different outcomes to reach. Each level is usually only a few minutes long, and the arenas repeat themselves pretty often, but this was originally designed for a mobile experience, the Vita. Objectives include wiping out enemies, capturing control points, reaching waypoints, or defending key elements. 
It's all really simple and quick, and despite the mech building element, the gameplay is easy to drop into and the game loves to throw tons of enemies at you. Action junkies looking for a quick fix might not dig the hangar work, but the missions have good payoff. This is actually a great fit for the Switch. You can spend a few minutes here upgrading your mech, then squeeze in some quick missions later. My only complaint is the campaign funnels you down one specific path before opening up the other's post-game. And speaking of post-game, you'll be able to play a few arenas as onslaught levels, just seeing how many waves you can survive, but this winds up being surprisingly dull. The real meat of post-game, for me anyway, was replaying levels to make sure I got all of the missing mecha parts. Now one nice area where Gunners differs from its inspiration is that you always have a full squad, Lance, of three wingmen for a four-man team. You can order them to attack, follow, or wait, and surprisingly they're all really good at each. Seriously, if you equip them right and give them time, they will gladly clear out the map of normal enemies. It's always funny when huge budget games can't get friendly AI right, but a little dinky effort like this just nails it. The only annoyance to the missions is just how often your nemesis, Ghost, shows up after the halfway point. Yeah, the game includes a few easy mini-bosses, but the main enemy starts showing up almost every mission and she is brutal for the unprepared. It's a bad balance issue with an otherwise straightforward game. As a Review Den pro tip, just spam guided missiles. They do loads of damage and will make short work of her. Hey, wait a minute, a Martian robot army led by a bright red mecha fighting against Earth? Haven't I seen this before? Okay, for presentation, I'm not getting candy coated. This looks like a PS2 era game. It first dropped on the Vita, okay, but even then I doubt it was pushing the hardware that much. Upscaled to modern systems, this doesn't really look all that great. Environments are extremely simple, the mechs themselves are just passable, and the on-screen displays look as if they've simply been blown up to a bigger screen, rather than properly redrawn for HD. The one exception to all of this is the Nintendo Switch while undocked. I use my Switch docked to my TV most of the time, and this is one game that actually seems to look better on the Switch screen itself. Maybe the game is rendered at 720p, which is why it looks off on modern TVs, I'm not sure. But it's a good fit here. The frame rate stays near 60 frames per second when the action is light or moderate, but it will dip when things get hectic. I would assume on other more powerful systems it's a solid 60. Production values are simply not here. Yeah, the in-game voice chatter is original Japanese, which is nice, but the story blurbs are bland text against a dull background. There are some translation issues, and I really wish the subtitles were more centrally located. When the action gets heavy, it's hard to take your eyes to the corner of the screen. Sound and music are fully serviceable, but that's it. Nothing really stands out, just being honest. Overall, these budget games are difficult for me to judge because I only get them on sale. As a full price game of say $20 or even $50, no, this is not worth it. But for a $5 sale for a console or one of the endless deep sales on Steam, I am totally down for this. And again, it's a perfect fit for the Switch. I'm always a sucker for games like this or even Forza where you can tinker with machines and try to get the best possible performance with limited parts or restrictions. Armored Core fans waiting for the next big budget game won't find it here, but as a tribute to the earlier simpler entries of the series, I'd say, yeah, this works well. And there we go. Thank you all so much for watching. Please feel free to comment below. Your input is always appreciated. And if you'd like to help a small channel grow, would you be my next subscriber? Thanks again. And always remember when things get tough, be sure to keep going because you are worth it.